Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. It's great to have you with us today. We're broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios. We're brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors. We're talking about uh, this story out of uh, Arizona where uh, homeowners are concerned because their homeowner association is saying, hey, you can't park your vehicles in the streets. In the driveway is fine. In your uh, garage is just fine. But the streets and their city streets. Yeah. In with, this case, it's a public street. A public street. Right. The homeowners association saying you can't park there. And the member is saying you can't regulate it because it's a public street. That's right. That's their argument. That's their argument. He he said that uh, he said, I don't think that there is jurisdiction that the, the homeowner association has over the city streets. Unfortunately, as I mentioned to you right before we went to break, I did some I did some checking out on it, right. and I found out that it is different in Arizona there than it is in Minnesota. Okay, uh, when you deal with a, a private street that's owned by the association, uh, that of course is controlled by the association because it's um, it is a street that the city does not have to maintain. It is something that is controlled by the people owning sure. the property. The city street the way it is here in Minnesota, belongs to that city. If it is a uh, county street, it's maintained by the county and That's not the right. city. So you have you have uh, city streets, county, you have state, you have federal roads, and they're all That's right. maintained by their gov- particular and they get governing to, body. So whichever governing body is maintaining it and owns it gets to set the rules. That's right. All right. But in Arizona, interesting <laughs> enough, <laughs> yes. a, a few years ago they changed... The state statute to read that any city street that runs through a homeowner's association, that portion that runs through the association can be under the jurisdiction Uh of the association and not the city. Wow. Wow. I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah. That way. So a few years ago, they drafted legislation that gave the HOA the power Mm -hmm. to control city streets that run through their property. Now they're talking about doing what? I'm still kind of confused about what this new legislation wants to change. So let's talk about this situation. Mr. Jones here has four cars, uh, a lot of of vehicles. He has a two-car garage. He can put two in the garage. He can put two in the driveway. And that's allowable. And that's allowable, and there would be uh, nothing said by the association. But he chooses not to, hmm. uh, either because he'll have stuff in the garage, he can't put two vehicles there, or because, as he mentioned in the article, it's inconvenient. He has to juggle vehicles around. He doesn't want to do it. He wants to be able to, to just be able to come and go. And so he, we're talking about convenience, not necessarily a right. And, and so, <laughs> right. That's and, and, right. And so now he's he's upset because the association is saying we're here's come, our rules. Here are our rules, and you're violating them. And the association doesn't want to have a lot of people park there. Why? Because it would be kind of unruly. It would mm-hmm. be unsightly. Mm-hmm. It, it could be uh, it could be hard to maneuver if mm-hmm. everybody started parking he's, in the street. And he's wrong in claiming the HOA has no jurisdiction, That's as right. you just mentioned. The so HOA he, can control public streets. So he did that that was that was the the part of his argument that is incorrect right. where, where he quoted uh, where he said I don't think that they have that jurisdiction. Well, they in do. Arizona they do. So now it's he's gone probably. He has gone to his state legislator asking that legislator to help change the the state law. Yeah. And, and so and so there, what? and there's a and so there is a gentleman who picked up the cause but and his, his name is uh, Representative John Kavanaugh, and uh, he wants to restrict homeowner associations from regulating street parking if they don't allow two cars to be parked in the driveway, and this pertaining only to streets that are privately owned by a homeowners association. So this doesn't answer the Joneses' problem at all. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. That's right. No wonder I was confused. <laughs> and, and and that and that is what happens so often. Uh, there um there are assumptions being oh, made. Oh good grief. And and you know, anytime you have a conversation, anytime you're going to have to work towards uh, a con- consensus building and, and Tony, you and I have been in property management a long time. That's right. We've dealt with countless 
homeowner asso associations, homeowners, everybody has a different agenda. Everybody has a different view. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different expectation. Mm -hmm. And until you get on the same page, yeah. that's, that's, why yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's why I talked a, a little bit earlier about intelligence. And what I'm referring to is not a person's it's intelligence ability. gathering is yes. kind of what you're talking about. Well, yeah. Yes. People need, and, and this was said by Socrates, someone needs intelligence, candor, and, uh, and goodwill in order for there to be an intelligent conversation in order for there to be a, in order for there <laughs> to, to develop be a, con a consensus, to develop a consensus. And so candor, of course, just means being able to be straightforward. Right. Uh, um, people nowadays are real happy to be straightforward. They'll tell you what, you, what they think. Yeah. Um, but indignantly, yeah. but what we're lacking here is intelligence. People aren't on the same page. No, they're not at all. They're not at all. So here's this legislator going off on a tangent and he's not just trying to control public streets that currently have HOA, or currently the HOA can control. He he wants to control the private streets? The private streets. So he's street. taking it like a giant step in the wrong direction. Well, and, and the reason why is because both of them have the wrong premise. And the, uh, and, and the See, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh is thinking, well, associations own private streets, and so they would have jurisdiction there, so he wants to do it. To a, control that. To control that. Uh, that's what Mr. Jones, the homeowner, says he thinks. But both of those and what they're thinking <laughs> is wrong. The, the, the state grief. statute is different. And so right. nothing is going to be addressed ultimately. So because all it's going to do is going to be another state law that limits the homeowner's ability to govern themselves. Yes. And think of all of the, all, all of the power and all of the time. And the money that's being wasted on legislation that's Crazy. not going to do a darn thing because we don't have people that even bother to take the time to be on the same page. Or even to take the time to understand what the current law states. Yeah. This is another example, and we see many every week, of one person's burning issue affecting all taxpayers in the state. Yeah, I, I I would be very surprised to learn that John Kavanaugh talked to many HOA members and many boards and got input. Wouldn't you be surprised isn't, if he is, did that? Isn't that the truth? Yeah, I, I I I would also agree with you on that too. We saw that, didn't we, uh, last year when we uh, talked about this uh, Gerlach bill? Yes, and we had the uh, homeowner who had the biggest concerns who brought this issue up too, Senator Gerlach. We had her on the show too. Well-meaning people, sure, and and uh, and the things that they believe in in principles, we all we a lot of us all agree on. But there is not that same understanding. Therefore. Um, Therefore, you're talking about someone going a different course mm -hmm. than what needs to be taken. That's right. And, and that's what's and, happening and here. And in the example you brought up from last year, the Gerlach bill, the homeowner that raised the issues to Senator Gerlach was not representing a group of homeowners. She was not representing an organization no. that had a concern over this. She was a single person no. that raised the issue. And, and because what happens is people hear bits and pieces. They hear one yeah. person's gripe here. Another person's gripe over there. And um, one, you know, uh, I heard someone say that, you know, uh, different individual uh, pieces of anecdotal information doesn't yeah. make data. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just because you exactly. have a lot of it doesn't mean that it's data. That's right. Uh, you know, you have to have a control group. You have to have, you, there's a lot of things that have to be set up to make sure that you know what it is that you're, mm -hmm. re which you're understanding with the information. People don't go to that length. And here we're talking about the basic idea of just going to your homeowner association. I don't know that there's anywhere in here that it says that this homeowner tried to approach his homeowner association and tried to see if there's something that could be reached. That's right. Is this a rule passed by the board in the in the past? Can we revisit this rule? Is it a necessary rule? We know, and we, we preach all the time, that members of a homeowners association have a say in how they are governed. Mm -hmm. They can go to board meetings. They can let their opinions be known. They can run for the board yeah. of directors and have some input into how rules are, are drafted. And now, instead, they go to the state legislator 
who's going to pass legislation, try to pass legislation that does not yeah. address their issue at all, but will definitely limit their ability to govern themselves. Yes, and because there isn't that un- there, there isn't that uh, understanding, you have what's called the law of unintended consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's so many other things that right. end up taking place that people didn't even think about because they weren't thinking it through. Yeah. And and again, I'm I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt here and say that they're well meaning and well intentioned. Uh, cuz for by and large I think that's true. You're very gracious, Gene. It's not uh, always the case, <laughs> but by and large I up. think it's true. Uh, by and large, I think people are out to get what they want. <laughs> I don't think they're what necessarily well meaning and yeah. well intentioned. I think they want what they want and I don't think they even stop to think if this is going to benefit or harm other people. Yeah. That, I, re- I really don't. Yeah, that was something here. I mean, uh, this uh, homeowner, Jones, was, when he was uh, uh, interviewed, uh, he said, and uh, he even uh, admitted himself, he said, obviously, if there are too many uh, cars in the street, it'll create havoc. But what he was saying basically is, I don't care about that. I just want enough numbers that allows my car <laughs> to be there when right. I want to. Right. And, le- and let me say, I don't mean yeah. all people are always totally self-serving, but I think when it reaches this extent, when it, when yeah. it goes this far, it, it, it's yeah. definitely driven by that self-serving interest. Yeah. Well, this is something we're going to be talking about uh, quite a bit today here with uh, the sort of a theme that will be going through our show today, folks. Uh, we'd uh, love to hear what uh, you think. You know, you can always give us a call on our uh, hotline, 952-224-2668. We'll t- take those messages, play them back, and uh, respond at next week's show mm-hmm. on that. But, hey, we need to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to have a conversation with Minneapolis City Council member Don Samuels. Back after these messages. Back after these messages.